Welcome to Financial Buzz Market Weekly. I'm R.K. Walker here at the New York Stock Exchange bringing you a review of this week's stock market. It was a strong week for the markets with all-time highs set on the S&P 500 and Dow Jones Industrials, although volume tended to run slightly below average. On Monday, the Institute for Supply Management caused some market convulsions when it mistakenly released an incorrect number, then released a second incorrect number, and finally released its final number right at about analyst expectations. The Institute's Manufacturing Index final number for May settled in at 55.4, up from 54.9. Both the Dow Jones Industrials and the S&P 500 closed at record highs. On Tuesday, the Commerce Department said new orders in April for factory goods rose for the third straight month, up 0.7 percent, and growth in March was also upwardly revised to 1.5 percent. On Wednesday, the ADP employment report for May was lower than expected, down 36,000 to 179,000 new private jobs created. And the ISM non-manufacturing index for May was 56.3, up from 55.2, and stronger than analysts' expectations. The Fed also released their Beige Book, a report of economic conditions in all 12 Federal Reserve districts. The tone was upbeat, showing growth in all districts, particularly with regards to consumer spending. The S&P 500 closed at a record high. On Thursday, jobless claims for the week ending May 31st edged up slightly to 312,000, with the four-week average down to a new recovery low of 310,000. The European Central Bank, in a much-awaited move, cut its lending rate to 0.15% and imposed an interest rate of negative 0.1% for banks to deposit money in an effort to stimulate the economy and halt disinflation. Markets rallied on the news and both the S&P 500 and Dow Jones Industrials closed at record highs. On Friday, non-farm payrolls for May showed an increase of 217,000, consistent with expectations, and the unemployment rate remained unchanged at 6.3%. Average hourly earnings increased 0.2% month to month. Markets were up on the news with both the Dow Jones Industrials and the S&P 500 in record high territory. Now let's take a look at some stocks. Apple shares traded at new highs this week after the technology company unveiled new software for their customers called iCloud Drive an internet-based storage app operable on both Macs and PCs. The company also added extra features to their iMessage application, making both these apps more competitive with other popular apps in the space, such as Dropbox and WhatsApp. Lockheed Martin Corporation advanced their space business this week after the aerospace company secured a new contract from the U.S. Air Force that is valued at $915 million. Under the terms of the contract, the company will supply the Air Force with a ground-based radar system for tracking objects in space. The radar will be incorporated into the Air Force's Space Fence program, which is designed to track satellites and smaller objects. Lockheed beat out their competitor Raytheon for the contract. GlaxoSmithKline shot up Thursday after the pharmaceutical manufacturer announced that they have settled litigation involving 44 U.S. states and D.C. regarding improper marketing of three of their drugs, Advair, Paxil, and Wellbutrin. The company was originally charged with promoting the use of drugs for unapproved usages, but agreed to settle the case for $105 million without admitting any wrongdoing. Along with the financial penalty, new regulations were also imposed on Glaxo to prevent further similar incidents. Sprint Corporation at T-Mobile U.S. made headlines Thursday when it was leaked that the mobile service operators have agreed on terms for a possible merger that is valued at approximately $32 billion. Sprint will pay $40 per share to acquire T-Mobile U.S. and once finalized, the combined companies will be more competitive with Verizon and AT&T. The two companies also expressed intentions of coming together to bid in the upcoming auctions for wireless airwaves. This is Financial Buzz Market Weekly. I'm R.K. Walker and I'll see you again next week. Thank you.